Hi there, it's Mark Toma from Tranquil Garden Urban Homestead. So today we're going to actually plant uh, these onion seedlings and um, we're going to use something called the seeding square to do it. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to use the seeding square to uh, transplant transplants. So we're ready to start uh, transplanting our onions, which um, again were seedlings that um, were seeded in my greenhouse and uh, they've been growing for quite a while now and uh, they're getting quite thick, a little bit thicker than the leeks that I transplanted last week and so they're ready to be planted out. They're getting tall and um, they're starting to bulb at the bottom as well, so ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to block plant them in blocks and what I'm going to use is the seeding square. Um, it will allow me to space things out properly. So the one thing that we don't need is we're not actually uh, planting seeds so we don't need the funnel that's on the bottom. Um, so we'll put that aside but um, we are going to use the dibber that's included that's magnetically held into place in this little spot here so it doesn't fall out. And uh, we're going to use that to make the holes for the transplants, and then we're going to um, use the uh, color-coded holes in here to space them out properly. So in order to determine uh, which of uh, these uh, color-coded holes we're actually going to use in the seeding square, we're going to consult um, the planting guide that actually comes with the seeding square. It's uh, printed out, laminated, and uh, it shows you which um, holes to use for various types of vegetable plants. So when we look at it here, we're looking for onion bulbing and it says to use the yellow holes, which is nine plants per square foot. So that's what we're going to do. And as you can see, yellow holes are right here and there's nine of them. And so it gives the onion a bit of a chance to grow fairly decent size. Um, but not waste space either. So obviously for other vegetable plants you'll consult the planting guide and you may end up using let's say the red ones which I use when I seeded my carrots or you might use uh, the blue ones for something larger or the middle one, just the middle one for things like uh, squash or perhaps tomato plants which need lots of room. So what we'll do is we'll um, lay it out on the ground with um, and use the yellow holes to make the actual holes for the transplants. So I'll move the camera so that you can see a little bit closer how that goes. So in order to show this properly you're just going to see my hands for a few minutes. So we've got the seating square and what we're going to do is we're going to start on the corner of the uh, the bed here and actually place it right in the corner. And it's nice with a raised bed because you do have sort of the straight, nice uh, 90 degree corners. Um, if you find it's not sitting flush, um, you might have to just kind of even it out a little bit. And uh, I've got a little bit of bits and pieces here from the compost that I put on here that aren't quite decomposed. So I did ahead of time kind of try to even it out a little bit. But what you want to do is basically try to press it in a little bit. And if there's something in the way, you can just sort of move it around. Okay, so once we've got it in place, um, remember what we're doing is we're doing the yellow holes. So we're going to take our dibber, and we're essentially just going to try to press it in. And some soil may be a little bit harder to press into, but the soil's not too bad. And you basically just want to go in, and you can go in fairly deep, because when we transplant, we can kind of adjust the height accordingly. And so we're just gonna press it in. And once we've got all of our nine holes, and I'm trying to remember if I did the middle one, I don't think I did. Oh yeah, I did, okay. So now what we can do, we can remove it, and it might be hard to see on camera, but we actually do have some holes here. I might have to redo that one. Or maybe I missed it. Let's see. Nope, they're there. 
Alright, so they're sometimes a little hard to see, so you kind of have to know where they are. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab our onions here, pop them out of the container, and we're going to very carefully te tease them apart. And we're essentially going to pop them into each of the holes. Now, I find sometimes with the dibber you do need to make the holes a little bit bigger. There. And you might just have to kind of give it a little bit of help. And with these onions, we don't want to plant them too deep, like we did with the leeks. And we don't want to plant the onions too deep. The leeks we did, but the onions need to be a little more shallow so they can bulb. Alright, and then continue on. So we're going to do all nine holes here. And like I said, you do need to make the holes a little bit bigger. Because the dibber doesn't necessarily make them big enough. Their dibber is great for seeds, but for onions, you do want to make it a little bit deeper and you do want to get most of the roots in the ground. And just cover it up, firm it in a little bit. So I'm just going to do three right now because it's going to be a little bit boring to have you watch me do all nine. Okay. The soil could have been loosened up maybe a little bit more. Stuff it in there. If there's stuff that you don't want in the bed, just throw it out. I'm throwing the branches and stuff onto my paths between the beds. Sort of free mulch. That's not doing too well. Just a minute. Alright. So the roots are going to go down. And onions don't tend to have very deep roots, so we don't have to worry too much about having a really deeply cultivated bed. So what I'll do is I'll do the other six and then um, I've got of course more to do. Now one thing to note is you can't see it here but when you do push it in usually you get a little bit of a ridge here. I don't hear but the next one, the next square is going to go come right here. All right, so everything is planted. Um, I actually ran out of onion plants, and I could have probably had a few more transplants. So I was only able to really do the one uh, one foot by four foot row, but um, they are spaced out now, and uh, they um, so we've got uh, nine in a square times four, which is thirty six, I believe. Um, so. One thing that you do have to realize with the seeding square is that the ones on the very ends tend to be a little bit close to the edges of the raised bed. So if you're worried about that and you want more space for your plants, you may want to consider staggering, staggering the seeding square and actually putting the seeding square a little bit further away by about six inches or so, half the size of the foot, and uh, just do then um, three seeding square sizes in in one row and have them offset like I said by about six inches or so and that will give you a little bit more room on the edges um, otherwise we'll see how the onions do and uh, we can always adjust it for next year if we find that the ones here on the corners don't get as big so the other thing is I did water them so and I'll have to just keep an eye on them and, and water them some more um, probably tomorrow and at least if I can daily just for a few days so that they get established. Then um, I've got this space here where I can do actually more leeks because I still have more leek seedlings so I'll probably fill in this area with leeks the way that I showed in the last video. Um, so finally if you've enjoyed this video please um, hit the thumbs up and if you um, would like to be notified of new videos, then please um, hit the subscribe button and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And until next time, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.